Welcome back. As promised, let's talk about the IT sector. Now, Kumar Rakesh, the India analyst of IT and auto at BNP Paribas, joins in. And in his preview note, he's opened up an interesting debate about what would be the peak growth in the recovery cycle. So they're saying that the IT stocks have done very well. Since the beginning of June, the Nifty IT index is up 30%. The growth recovery narrative has been embraced by investors. So now the debate is shifting to what will be the upcycle peak revenue growth potential. Consensus, many people on the market believe that the peak revenue is going to be high single-digit revenues, at least for the large-cap IT companies. But according to BNP Paribas, that is a bit conservative, and the revenue growth may even exceed that. Uh, so, you know, uh, thank you very much for joining in. This is Reema here. So talk to us about this, you know, peak upcycle revenue. Where do you see it settling and why? Hi, Reema. Good morning, and thank you for having me on the show. Uh, if you look at the long-term trend in the IT services industry from the recovery, uh, understanding how his, historically the recovery has played out in the sector. Over the last two decades, there have been only two instances when the industry growth has slowed down to the level what we are seeing currently. Uh, one was post-GFC and the other was post-COVID. And after both these occasions, we saw growth accelerating beyond 20%. Now, we are not making an argument that we would see something similar to that. But what the consensus right now is building is uh, reflecting largely a very usual cyclical recovery. But the trough which has been set by this down cycle is one of the most severe trough we have seen in the last two decade history. And that gives us a sense that plainly from the cyclical recovery perspective, there is a potential upside to revenue growth. But if some of the demand catalysts such as Gen AI starts playing out later next year, we could start seeing significant upside to these revenue growth numbers. And that is where we think that the consensus is building expectations, which is quite conservative. The other way to look at these numbers from where the consensus numbers are setting, if you look at the company's fourth quarter YY growth number, where they would be exiting this financial year, most of the companies looking at, say, Infosys, they would be exiting going by what the consensus is building at about 7-8% YY growth in the fourth quarter, and which is what the consensus is building for next financial year as well. That implies for the entire FI26, it implies there will not be any incremental pickup in the demand, which again looks pretty conservative to us. Um, bulk of the recovery would start playing out actually next financial year onwards. And, and hence, there would be more upside to where the exit growth for this year would be. And both of it tells us that we possibly are going into upcycle with very conservative growth expectations heading into it. Uh, so... Um... You know, we were just chatting with Kavaljeet uh, Saluja of Kotak Institutional Equities in the morning, and he said that for the large cap companies, he's anticipating a 7 to 9% revenue growth for FI26. What is your own estimate? And can Indian IT companies hit double digit next year, FI26? And can it sustain a double digit up move, uh, a growth, say, even in the subsequent year, FI27? So we are building closer to 10, 11% in our estimates for FI26 and 27. So we would be above where the consensus is building their estimates. Uh, part of the reason we already talked about, we also think that at some stage, the Gen AI demand will start kicking in. If you look at the CapEx, which hyperscalers are doing, it's growing at a pretty fast pace. And for the rest of the decade, our team thinks that it will continue to grow at 11% CAGR, uh, the CapEx in the data set uh, build out, which the hyperscalers are doing. But the thing is that bulk of this CapEx right now is being used, the data center capacity right now is being used on the Gen AI side is for training the model. 60, 70% of the data center capacity is not generating revenue, but rather training the models. For inference, which is where the uh, revenue generation opportunity kicks in is only about 30% of the total capacity of the AI data centers. Now, that is going to change through the decade. A, this high level of CapEx is going to continue, and then we'll start seeing higher share of inference kicking in later part of this decade. And as that starts happening, we would see much higher Gen AI cloud revenue uh, being generated for hyperscalers. And when that starts happening, there would be a lot of work which will get created for IT services companies for customization, implementation, and plainly maintenance of these large language models on those Gen AI clouds. So there is incremental demand which is going to come around in the coming years. And that creates the, uh, the additional growth opportunity for the sector. And, and that's something which we have partly building into our estimates, sorry. And how would you, um, you know, counter the argument that the stocks have run up excessively uh, since the beginning of June? 
you know, the IT index is up 30%. Individual stocks, even large caps have seen a rally, you know, going up to nearly 40%. Have they priced in all the good news? So first, the context why the stocks have rallied, uh, that was a reflection of significant under ownership of the sector both foreign institutional investors as well as domestic, their ownership had fallen to about eight and a half odd percent of their total equity portfolio. This is the lowest we have seen in the last 10 years. And that was indicating a significant level of bearishness for the sector. Now that has started changing over the last three months. We have seen both domestic and foreign institutional holders increasing their weight in the sector. And that is something which has increased the valuation. Now the question obviously arises that has that valuation pickup already priced in uh, all the upside that we are talking about here. I think in this conversation, we'll have to bring in a little India context that what is the valuation and how it is trading for rest of the sectors in India. If you look at IT sector valuation relative to the last five year average, it would be at a premium of about 22, 23%. And when you look for the rest of the sectors, uh, for most of the other sectors, they would be trading at much higher relative to their history, barring financial services. Almost every other sector valuation is much above their five-year average, more than 23% premium that IT sector sees. The similar thing, if you look at from where the Nifty sector uh, is trading relative to their prior peak in 2023 or prior, IT sector is only about 7 8% above its prior peak. Every other sector, including financial services, is much above their prior peak in their sector. So I think we'll have to bring in this India context that across the sectors, we have seen significant valuation re-rating. And in that context, the re-rating that the IT sector has seen is possibly at the lowest end. Mm. You said uh, the FI domestic ownership in IT went down to 8.5% at the trough levels. What does it stand at right now? What's the number? It, it would be about 9.5% for Nine foreign and a half institutions. Percent. Yeah. For foreign institutional wealth. Okay, got that. Yes. Uh, particularly talking about TCS, um, you know, we were doing a poll and the CNBC TV18 poll throws up that TCS's top line revenue growth will be about 1.2%, 1.3% in constant currency terms. Your own estimate is that TCS will see a muted growth of 0.2%. So can you tell us why, you know, when you're so bullish in the sector over the next two or three years, why is it in this quarter that you're expecting sluggish growth for TCS? What are the headwinds that the company is facing? So first, the context here is that we haven't seen a material demand pickup so far reflecting. Whatever pickup that we are seeing is largely cyclical. It's not broad-based demand recovery led uh, that we are seeing. And hence, there would be idiosyncrasies between companies where there would be continued weakness that we would expect to see. And in case of TCS, we are expecting that there would be some weakness related to the Europe exposure, uh, and especially in UK and some of the BFSI weakness, which is there. And that is something which can potentially impact their quarter. And that is why our expectation would be lower than where the consensus is building. Okay, Kumar, we leave the discussion here. Thank you very much for uh, joining in.